Welcome to Real Estate Radio Live, an informative and engaging podcast discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate. Your host, Joe Kachera, provides you with insight and guidance on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate. He also offers real estate tax management strategies, new construction advice, home improvement tips, and much, much more. And now, to guide you around the world of real estate, here's your host and Real Estate Radio Live team leader, Joe Kachera. Hello, welcome in. This is Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live. Thank you for those that are tuning in. Also, thank you for those that continue to view and tune in on Facebook and social media. We appreciate that very much. We continue to try to get this information out and available to our audience as uh, many different ways as we can. Most of you know it's a podcast, so we do in our studio here a couple different days a week. We do our podcast, and uh, certainly right now with the environment we're in with COVID-19, we are doing all remote and all call-ins if we have guests, for sure. And um, on a regular basis, you'll uh, hear different guests, different situations, and different programs. What we try to do, what I've tried to been doing is once a week, and uh, today is one of those days, either Tuesday or Wednesdays each week, giving everyone an update on how the market is currently shaping out right now and it, as it relates to COVID-19. And so... The reason for that is a lot of people from day to day want to try to have get a better understanding of what the rates are like, what the market's like, what the purchase market's like, the buyers, you know, what should a buyer be doing? What should a seller be doing? Should we be taking advantage of interest rates? How are interest rates going to relate to this? What kind of changes are happening with real estate? There's all kinds of different things that are affecting the market. So once a week, I'll be giving you an update. I apologize. Some of these things are obviously redundant because they don't change from week to week. But nevertheless, we get a lot of requests and response for people that want to have an idea of what's going on in the marketplace. So we'll continue to do that. Over 10,000 plus downloads a month. We want to continue to thank those and um, greatly appreciate all the support we've gotten for the last 11 years when we've been doing this real estate show in uh, live radio and podcast. So I appreciate that very much. And uh, remember, if the topic doesn't apply to you, I like to try to remind you to, you know, pass it along to friends, coworkers, family members. You never know who this is going to help and who is in the need of some education and information as it relates to this industry. So I'm going to jump in and start talking a little bit initially about interest rates, the market, those who want to take advantage of refinances, what's happening with the interest rates. And then I'll move into the second part of the show and then give everyone an update with real estate and what's going on in the real estate market. So right now, again, rates are, as we sit here today on, what is it, it's April 14th, rates are very good. The conforming interest rates are down in the low 3% range. So I would encourage, again, everyone, uh, we have hundreds of people that have got their paperwork into us, got them pre-approved, got them started. And we're starting to lock a lot of people now in the last couple of days, and we'll hopefully continue that trend with rates coming back down where we, where I thought and most people thought that they would, and they would continue to fall for a while, and they have. So 15-year fixed is right now, again, all things being equal. Now, this depends on credit scores, loan-to-value, you know, your ability to qualify, all those things. But it's right around 3% now. That's good because a few weeks ago, to tell you how volatile these markets are, a few weeks ago, the 15-year fixed was up to 3.5%, which is really, really artificially high. To give you some perspective, about a month ago, the 15-year fixed was down to like 2.6%. Two and five eights, two point six two five. The fifteen year fix. So, will it get down there that low again? I'm not quite sure. But as it starts getting to three percent, my guess is it'll come a little lower than three percent. So, for those that are targeting and looking at fifteen year fixed money, now is the time to get your paperwork in, get approved, get ready. What I'd like to do is get people in place and ready to lock. And the reason why that's important, I've said this before. But for those, I apologize for the redundancies and the repetitiveness of some of this, but it's good because someone may be listening to this for the first time. What you want to do is get your paperwork in, get approved, get ready to go. That way, when the rates come down and hit the number that you're looking for, 
we could lock in for you. In some cases, the rates only stay low for a day or so. I know that sounds crazy, but it does happen. The rates stay real low for a day, maybe two days, and then they bounce back up. A lot of that's because of volatility. Some of it's because lenders' pipelines get start getting jammed up, so they raise the rates a little bit. The point here is if you want to try to time the market the best you can, there's no perfect situation, my suggestion is to do that. And hundreds of people are doing that with our team here. So if you have any questions about how to go through that process, do that for sure. The other thing that I want to get out on a regular basis if I can is jumbo financing is really, really getting even more conservative and even more restricted than it was before. Financing in general was pretty conservative leading into this disruption in the COVID-19 era here, but it's even more conservative now. So jumbo financing for those that are, you know, not familiar in high value areas like this, any loan amounts above, I think it's about 769, anything over that amount is considered jumbo. So any of the jumbo financing, what we've seen is a lot of jumbo lenders get out of the market. What do I mean by get out of the market? They're just, they're not doing jumbo financing for a while. It's not, it doesn't mean they're going to, you know, leave the market forever, but we've seen a lot of jumbo lenders get out of the market and just basically take more risk off the table than it's going with because of all the things that are going on right now. And so if you have a jumbo loan, I would encourage you, the best thing you could do right now is look at financing as soon as you can. The reason why is rates are good. Rates on 30-year jumbos are down to three and a half, three and five eighths range, which again are all time lows for jumbo financing. Now, that, keep in mind when I say that, that's considering excellent credit, loan to value, ability to qualify, all these things, all these factors. Because we could be losing more and more jumbo lenders, I would recommend, strongly recommend that anyone that wants to take advantage of refinancing or maybe in a purchase environment right now, do it sooner than later. Just because if we keep losing more and more jumbo investors, obviously what happens is your pool shrinks of options. So to give you a, a sample, we, we just a, two or three weeks ago had eight to 10 options for jumbo investors. Today, as I'm doing this show three weeks later, we have four options. Four options for the most part. So look at what's happened. We had 10, we had 10 actually, or 11 up to a month or a month and a half ago. Then it shrank to eight and now it's down to four. So this is what's happening in a marketplace where it's very volatile. Many of these lenders are taking risk off the table. They don't want to be involved. Plus on the back end, there's a lot of people that are missing their mortgage payments, going into agreements with lenders on the forbearance programs, and a lot of different things going on that are making lenders nervous. So if you're in that jumbo category, make sure you get in and get that taken care of sooner and later. Because my concern is a lot of these jumbo investors will not come back into the market probably until the end of the year. That is my best guess. And that's what I would try to stay focused on. And see if you could take advantage of it as much as you can. The other thing that's taking place is there are a lot of lenders out there that are not offering jumbo financing at all. There are some lenders that are holding off on appraisals. There are some lenders. The reason I bring this up is be careful who you're working with. If you're not working with the right lender, you might get hung up and lose one of those jumbo investors during the process. I've seen People take in loans, put them in the system, and because all of a sudden these lenders pull out of the market, now you're stuck. In some cases, even if you lock rates, you may not, they may not commit to that rate lock and close your loan. So be, just be very careful right now in who you're working with and make sure you ask good questions when you're working with a broker or a mortgage banker or a retail bank, whoever it is, ask them questions like, who are your investors? Do you have jumbo financing? How many options of jumbo financing do you have? You know, what do those rates look like? Ask a lot of good questions. We're here to help you obviously do that. 
So I'm going to switch gears a little bit and talk about real estate in general. So most people realize that I think it was a few weeks ago, real estate was deemed an essential business. Now that was a national commitment or a national announcement that real estate was deemed an essential business. However, the problem is the little tangle in all this is that there are some states and counties that don't go by the national policies and guidelines. So what that means is some counties, it doesn't matter, even if it's an essential business, you still can't operate as normal. And for example, Santa Clara County, San Mateo County, Monterey County, all right now are still restrictive. So restrictive means unless something changes, from what I understand, you cannot show a home. If you're a real estate agent and you're a consumer, you cannot show and view that home unless the home is vacant. And I mean vacant from no one living in there. I don't mean vacant like we're going to leave our house for five hours and go ahead and show people our house. No, that's not a vacant home. A vacant home is when no one is currently living in it. So the home has to be vacant in order to show the home. That's a restrictive business. So even though real estate is an essential business, it's still very restrictive in the way they're dealing with it right now. So keep an eye on that. Check with your real estate agents. Things are changing every day. They really are. You're seeing this. They're changing on a regular basis. I, for one, again, I don't believe, if possible, to stop everything you're doing because of what's taking place right now. I know it's restrictive. I know we have to be careful. I realize that we all have to do our part. We have to be unselfish. All that I realize and I know and I understand and we, I'm following. But I also think you have to be careful not to paralyze yourself and just stop living in general. And what I mean by that is, you know, if you want to buy a home, and if you're in position to buy a home, go buy a home. Now, some people might say, well, why would you do that when the markets or when COVID-19? It's not that it doesn't matter, but don't make the mistake of letting that dictate your life 100%. Seriously, if you are in the process of making a major decision like this and you want to either list your home or buy a home, go ahead and do it. Do it. Is it going to be a little different? Yes. Is competition going to be different? Yes. May you may may or may not get as enough, you know, as much money maybe if you did on a regular market. All those things are true. But if the timing's right for you and you want to sell your home or you want to buy a home or you want to relocate, just do it. You could overanalyze yourself to death trying to figure out when the perfect time is to do something. Now, if your job's in jeopardy, you're not sure what's going to happen in the marketplace, you might be making less money. That Those are different conversations. You never want to put yourself in a situation where you may not be able to afford a decision like that. I'm not suggesting. What I'm suggesting is if your job has not changed, you're still making the same amount of income, your plans were to buy a home or sell a home, go ahead and do it. I'll tell you why, on the devil's advocate side, why this is a good time. This is a good time because most people are not doing business as usual. I know that sounds funny, but this is a good time for that reason. Now, someone might say, well, Joe, the problem with that is we don't have enough inventory. It would be great to have more inventory. Well, that's true. So if you're a buyer, you have less to choose from than maybe a typical market. There's probably six or 700 homes on the market, roughly. I'm not sure. Somewhere in that ballpark. Could be a little more or less. So you might say, well, gee, it'd be nice if I was in a market where they had 15, 1,600 homes on a market. But when is that going to happen and, and will it happen? And I'll think a little bit in advance for you here too. So I think as we come out of this terrible, terrible virus, which has affected a lot of people. And it's sad and it breaks my heart how many people it's affected and passed away and their families and the illnesses and the businesses that have taken an extreme financial hit and some will not reopen. And all that, that just breaks your heart when you think about all the people that this is affecting. But I will say this, when we come out of this, whether it's later this year, or early next year, no one really knows when the full 100% reconvenience of business and life is going to take place. It could be later this year, could be next year. I'm convinced when we come out of it, people are going to come out full steam ahead. What do I mean by that? 
once business starts cranking back up, once people start getting a taste of being able to be back in regular life, regular jobs, taking vacations, taking time off, meeting with people, getting with people that they care about, all those things are going to generate a lot of energy and excitement around people making decisions they may not have made before. I know that sounds funny, but I do believe this. I think there's going to be so much pent up demand for not only travel, making decisions, making bigger decisions, not holding off, not being so indecisive on things. I believe the reason I'm bringing this up is I also believe this is going to affect the real estate market in the Silicon Valley. I think that coming out of this, when we come out and we're 70 to 100% back to normal, that the market is going to explode, which is a good thing in some ways. But it may not be a good thing for someone that is a buyer or someone that now, if rates are a little bit higher and you don't, and now it's a seller's market, and now you're getting outbid, and now homes are going up, the values are going up. What I'm suggesting is right now, you have a better opportunity to make offers, contingent offers. You have a better opportunity to maybe make an offer of less than asking. You have an opportunity to negotiate a little bit more because of what's going on. That's not necessarily a bad thing. When this market turns around and changes, and it will, we will go back to a normal market. That normal market could be a seller's market in which buyers, you could be locked out of a market for a while. You could. As an example, you're a buyer right now and you're looking for a home valued at approximately a million dollars. And yes, there's less inventory, so you have less to choose from, but you find a house you like for a million dollars. I would suggest right now, let's say you just get into contract and because of the market, you get it for a million or less and there's no overbidding, there's no competition, you get the home, you get a record low interest rate, you're good to go. I would suggest a year from now, that story's different. What I mean by that, if it's a, if we fast forward a year and we look into the future, I will bet anything that it's more of a seller's market, prices are going to go up, we don't know where rates are going to be, that home would be tougher to get into a year from now than it is right now. I can almost guarantee that. I've seen these markets before. I know how some of these trends work. We follow these trends on a regular basis. All I could say is if you want to make a decision on buying or selling a real estate, please look at your entire situation and don't let this paralyze you from making a decision if the time is right for you. All right, that's an update. If there's any any other questions you have, always you know how to reach me, joe at reradiolive.com. You could contact, uh, you could call or text 408 408- 838-9060. We have an exciting webinar that's coming up uh, if everything stays on schedule on April 22nd. April 22nd, a week from today, we're going to have a webinar with uh, uh, Silicon Valley Virtual Real Estate Summit. And we're going to have most of the major real estate companies representative on the panel. And we're going to have an economist and we're also going to have a lender. And we're going to talk about the Silicon Valley real estate market and how it's affecting now and then what we might be looking at in the future after we come out of COVID-19. So again, for more information, go to reradiolive.com. I want to thank those again for viewing the show, downloading the show, sharing the show. I appreciate that very much. Thank you again for tuning in today. Have a great, great afternoon, and we will be back with you next week for another update. Take care. You've been listening to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Subscribe to our podcast. Discover more at reradiolive.com.